Hello, I'm Brian Borum, and I'm going to talk to you about Cortex. First of all, a little introduction. Uh, I am nowadays a distinguished engineer at Grafana Labs. I moved from uh, Waveworks. You may, if you've uh, followed Cortex for a while, you may have, have seen me there. Um, at Grafana Labs, as well as Cortex, I work on Loki and Tempo, which are, are kind of projects that were created out of Cortex for uh, logging and tracing, respectively. Hi, I'm Elvin. I am a software engineer at AWS. I work on a service called Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, or AMP for short. It is an offering based on Cortex, and I recently became a Cortex maintainer. Thanks for that, Alvin, and welcome to the team. Now, to look at what we're going to be talking about in this session, I'm going to give a, an overview of Cortex, first of all, just run through how it works, because I know a lot of people come to these sessions without that background. I'm going to go through some uh, news, what's been happening recently on the project, and then Alvin is going to run through how AWS are working with the Cortex project. We're going to touch on some future work and then flip over to live Q&A. So first of all, what is Cortex? Well, it's a large scalable system for handling metrics. And, and by metrics, we mean uh, some kind of number that, that varies over time, sometimes called a time series. Um, Cortex is built to be a centralized service, highly available, very scalable, and, and also durable. It will hang on to your data for a long time. Um, it can be used for many teams or users. It was originally designed to create a uh, Prometheus as a service, um, but you can, you can use it within an organization uh, and, and keep multiple people's data separate. So who uses Cortex? Well, a couple of the uh, big Prometheus as a user names there, Grafana Labs, uh, Weaveworks, where Cortex was created. Um, companies like uh, Electronic Arts and Etsy use it internally. Uh, and one of the newer announcements, um, Amazon, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus uses Cortex to to run that service. So what does Cortex do? Well, I've drawn a very big picture diagram here. Over on the left, you have Prometheus, which is doing its thing of, of gathering metrics, what we call sometimes scraping from exporters, from programs, from machines, uh, wherever your metrics are coming from. And then sending those, and this is Cortex, this is the Cortex logo in the middle, which uh, gathers, collects the metrics, stores them. Um, and then you have some kind of uh, dashboard over on the right where you're querying the data and viewing it. Let's drill into that a little. We have Prometheus on the left, and we have a, a store on the right. So this is going to be a um, something like an AWS S3 or a Google Cloud Storage, some kind of blob store. You can also get this kind of thing on premise. Your your storage vendor, EMC, Dell, someone like that, will have usually described as an S3 compatible store that you can use the same way. And that's what uh, that's what makes the data durable and and pretty low cost to store. Um, thousands and millions of, of metrics over time. So when the data comes in, Cortex has a process called a distributor, and you can run as many of those as you like. You can scale out horizontally. Um, you could run a couple for resilience, or you could run a hundred to handle a high load. And the distributors pass the data on to ingester processes and what they do is they collect up the data and they make what we call a block. The block is about two hours of data, um, which might be 
think in terms of a gigabyte, um, send that data up to the store at that uh, two hour mark. Distributors and the ingesters use a, a key value store. So that's something like etcd or console uh, to decide which ingester is holding, handling which data. And, uh, and if you add more to scale up, then they automatically figure out how the, the re, what we call sharding, shards of data, different slices of data going to different machines is handled automatically by Cortex. And one more thing on the ingest path, um, once we've created these two R blocks, uh, this process called the compactor, um, will download a set of blocks and create a 12 hour block and then even a 24 hour block. So we, um, crunch the data down. We remove any duplicates from the data and, and we create these bigger blocks, which are a bit more efficient to work with over time. On the query path, here on the left, I've got uh, Grafana. Everybody uses Grafana to, to draw dashboards, right? Um, and it will send in queries in, in the Prometheus PromQL language. And they're going to be served ultimately from data in the store. So the way that works, first of all, we have a, a query front end, which queues the queries and also splits them. So if you send in, say, a seven day query it'll get split into seven one day queries which are more efficient to process those are passed to querier processes that uh, do the actual work of of fetching the data and interpreting the promql and again you you might want to scale that out you might want to have a hundred of those to handle your load um and there's another set of processes called the store gateway those are the ones that that fetch the data from the store um, and again, they have one of these uh, key value stores to decide who's doing what. And the purpose of that is, is so we don't have like a hundred different programs all downloading the same gigabyte block. Um, they will again, shard that divide up the work into slices automatically, um, using the key value store to, uh, persist who's doing what. And, um, uh, it's more efficient that way. Now, lastly, we have a lot of caching on the query path. We cache the data that comes from the store. We cache indexing and metadata on that. And we even cache uh, partial query results. And this is done, again, to make things more efficient, to make your response time on your dashboard blazing fast. Okay, let's move to the project update. Since the last time we did this talk, there's been uh, four Cortex releases with 293 contributions from 59 authors working at 22 different companies. So that's great. Uh, round of applause. Thank you to all our contributors. The maintainer team, uh, Alvin, Alvin Lin, who's our newest maintainer, works at Amazon Web Services, myself, Gotham, Marco, Peter, and, and Tom Wilkie, the original creator of, of Cortex, all work at Grafana Labs. And Jacob Lisi has now moved to Google. The releases that we've done, uh, just quickly going through the highlights. Um, 1.8 gave us per tenant retention limits. 1.9 gave us a uh, shuffle sharding, which is a feature to, um, as you, as you get into hundreds of processes to, uh, limit the, the extent to which failures will impact any one customer or user. 1.10 brought us exemplars, which, uh, we're showing an example of here, these little blobs that if, if they are collected by your, uh, program your application that, that you're monitoring, um, that you can set it up. So if you click on one of these, it will take you to a distributed tracing view and you can see all the, the low level detail of what went on for that particular operation and overlaying those onto the 
metric view is a really powerful way to to navigate between metrics and traces and get a, a great insight into your system. In 1.11, we, we got some new metrics um, and also uh, an SNS feature. I'm going to hand over now to Alvin and uh, he's going to tell you about that feature amongst other things. So today I'm here to talk a little bit about Cortex and M. When choosing the foundation of M, we look into many alternatives, including some internal AWS services, other open source projects. We even considered writing everything from ground up ourselves. But we ended up going with Cortex because it's rich Prometheus compatible feature set. It supported remote read, remote write, prompt QL, alert manager, and rules. It was really easy to set up Cortex to start working with Prometheus. Cortex microservice architecture is scalable. We can scale individual parts individually as needed. By using Cortex, AMP actually saved a lot of time and energy to offer the service that we wanted to offer our customers. We have been running Cortex for more than a year now. We run many core Cortex clusters to handle the scale that AMP needs. During the journey of operating Cortex, we have implemented and proposed some improvements. The first example, Alert Manager now supports zone aware replication. Running software in different zones for higher availability is in AWS DNA. Whenever we are designing a system or a feature, we ask ourselves, what happens if a zone goes down? Can we survive? We ask the exact same question when we look at Cortex LM Manager. And we found that zone aware replication was not available. So we submitted a PR to implement it. We encourage everyone to enable the feature for higher availability. Second example, many customers wanted to have SNS as a receiver for Alert Manager. So we work with both Cortex and Prometheus to fulfill customers' need. We submitted PRs to both Prometheus and Cortex repositories to implement the feature. Now customers can send their alerts to SNS and enjoy the benefit of integrating with more types of endpoint like text message, email, and SQS through SNS. Aside from providing new features, we were also keeping an eye on, on the operation aspect of Cortex. During one of our weekly ops review, we noticed the metrics from Cortex related to block storage operation failure was spiking up. So we looked deeper and found that the matrix was unintentionally incremented for expected HTTP 400 error. We quickly submit a PR to have it fixed. And runs Cortex using block storage because it is cost efficient. But Cortex does not support series deletion for block storage. We heard many feedbacks from many, fee from many customers that they wanted to be able to delete series. For example, they may wanted to decrease their cardinality. So we proposed a design and submitted a PR for the block storage ser series deletion feature. Since M's launch, we received a lot of good feedbacks from the customer. And I have to give Cortex a lot of credit for it. We are not treating Cortex as yet another open source software and expect others to provide new features and fix bugs. We are committed to increase our investment of active Cortex contribution. My recent award of Cortex internship is a proof of our commitment. We will contribute more and more, and hopefully we will have more maintainers. Of course, Cortex being an open source project only gets better with involvement from all of you. So please, if you are interested, contribute to Cortex. Any contribution is welcome. It can be as simple as improving an error message. That's how I get started. Thank you. Thanks for that, Alvin. It is great to have more people joining the community. I want to mention we had uh, two CVEs. We had two, two security vulnerabilities reported. And, and we do have a process whereby 
we ask people to disclose those privately to the maintainer team and then we work on the the fix in private and get that out uh, ahead of describing the vulnerability um they're both a little bit similar uh, people finding ways to trick cortex into sending files off the local machine um the the first one by alert manager templates which are, are generally available feature the second one um only if you exposed cortex uh to let users kind of forge this um header this http header and we don't recommend that we we always recommend you run cortex behind an authorization proxy that will um use some some proper security credentials to figure out who's calling and then and then create this header internal to your cluster let's take a look to the future now on the cortex project i'm going to hand over to alvin again to tell you about a project underway at aws we wanted cortex compactor to be able to compact time series a lot faster than you currently can this will allow cortex to store most time series so, we propose a design to increase the concurrency of the compactor. The design is becoming a collaboration between Cortex and Thanos. Thanks, Alvin. Another proposal that's underway is for downsampling, meaning if you originally recorded at, at one rate, say every 15 seconds, then you might drop that after a while to every five minutes to have fewer samples to deal with, makes the system go faster. So that's um, underway now. And I uh, wanted to mention something I've been working on. Um, the ingesters, when they restart, either either after a crash or because you're rolling out a new version, uh, can take several minutes to um, get started, load the data from where they were last time. So um, that work is actually going on upstream in Prometheus. And uh, when we get that settled, we'll then bring it into Cortex and benefit from that. And, and everyone else in the Prometheus ecosystem will benefit from that too. Now, question that always gets asked, so I thought I'd put it in the video. Um, how, how would I compare Cortex and Thanos? They're both CNCF projects that are based on Prometheus. They're both solving certainly one problem which is which is if you have a lot of prometheus data how can you handle that um and we share a lot of code uh, the blocks that i talked about a lot of the code for that came from thanos um and for instance the the caching the query front end uh thanos has taken that from cortex so um in some respects, it's it's easier to talk about the similarities than the the differences. Uh, but I know I know people have that question, and they you know they want to pick one to use, and that's certainly I would recommend picking one and not using both. Um, so the main thing I would stress is that Cortex is is designed to build a large centralized system. Uh, it has, for instance, this this automatic sharding and shuffle sharding facilities to to um, distribute the work across many, many machines. It also built for multi-tenancy. Um, Cortex has, has had multi-tenancy added, but uh, it's, it's not as mature. So, um, so if, that, if that kind of sounds like you, that you want a, a, certainly a very large system, uh, because if you don't want a very large system, you probably find Prometheus will handle the load just fine um, but if, you, if you're going uh, beyond what a, what a large Prometheus can do uh, and you want to build one of these centralized services within your organization or or for external users that's what Cortex is designed for um, Thanos I would say it shines when first of all you're, you're you're starting out you're adding it to your existing system uh, it kind of goes a bit easier in that process um because uh cortex being designed as as a large system can take a bit of configuring and, and tuning and deciding how to set various parameters there is a, a bit of work there with with cortex um because 
uh, because the the sort of view that it has on the world. Okay, let's flip over to Q and A. See you in a minute. 